Everybody's always talking about horsepower, but the people that are in the know know it's all about torque. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the uh, garage, driveway. Well, it's a beautiful day outside, so I thought why not go ahead and take the camera out. Hopefully the color doesn't look like total crap out here, but uh, we're talking today about torque tuning. And uh, you know, we're not going to get into the tuning process. This is a very complicated thing to learn. Okay, maybe not learn. It is a complicated thing to understand. There is a lot going on whenever we do uh, torque tuning, a lot of different moving parts in the background that we're unaware of. Think of it, if you know anything about what used to be torque management, this is torque management 2.0 or torque management on speed, crack, all kinds of other drugs. This is pissed off torque management. So beforehand, we basically had torque parameters in the vehicle that would limit certain things at different times of operation in the vehicle to protect components of the vehicle, such as the engine, transmission, driveline, you know, the whole thing as a package. So what they ended up doing was going into, from the torque management into basically the torque control system. And now if you go in and log all of your torque stuff, you're seeing that you have uh, multiple items or multiple components in the car that are in control of the commanded torque. The commanded torque is usually directly uh, associated with your pedal. So the more pedal that you give the car, the more torque it requests. And so it requests a bunch of torque. The engine tries to match the, the requested torque. And then whenever certain things happen, such as your transmission shifts, the transmission then takes over and requests a new torque. And so if you're requesting 400 foot-pounds of torque as you're accelerating and the transmission kicks in and goes from second to third gear, it may say, hey, I only need or I can only shift with 270 foot-pounds of torque and it will pull timing, close the throttle body, basically back power off on the motor so that you're not hurting the transmission. Now, as I said, that lines up a lot of the ways with how, how torque management used to work back in the day. But now because of that, you have your engine that can slow it down or reduce it. You have your transmission, and then you have what is your final kind of torque, which is based on the axle torque. And these numbers are, I'm not sure where they come from. There is a lot of math involved here. So that's the nice thing about it. They've realized that, or they've known, but they found out a way to incorporate all this math. So if you know what the displacement is, you know what your, uh, your manifold pressure is, your, your air density, all that, you can calculate the exact amount of power that an engine is outputting. So, but this all requires all of your other things to be dialed spot on, specifically like your dynamic airflow. And this is one of the things that I harp on whenever I talk about dynamic airflow being proper. Whenever we get to the torque tuning stage, that is critical or else the values start getting a little bit wonky and you might start having to dial torques in higher than what you're actually making. But listen, if you're not on a torque uh, a platform that's, that uses torque tuning, just I'll leave a link up here in the corner. You can jump back over to the basic stuff. This is probably a lot to take in if you are not diving into torque tuning specifically. So, but that being said, what we do whenever we torque tune is we go in and there's virtual torque maps that we can look at. And those torque maps should throughout the RPM range or the power band or whatever you want to call it should match what an actual torque curve for your vehicle would look like. But say it's a stock vehicle is only making 430 foot pounds of torque as we add modifications such as a supercharger or turbo or cams or you know all these things we are then exceeding that initial torque curve that was, was developed in on the ECU. Whenever that happens you'll see people run into issues like the throttle body closing on them because they may be accelerating and it feels like things stall out. That's because they've reached their, their peak torque that's dialed in on that curb. So you can do all of these mods, make a thousand horsepower, but if your torque model is still off and your torque maps are still low, the, the engine itself will pull timing, pull fuel, shut the throttle body on you. It will kill your power and it will only go up to, you know, what it's allowed to within these torque maps. Much like the uh, dynamic airflow maps, this is all math. If you look at it, it is a bunch of jumbled numbers that don't make much sense, but somebody deciphered all of these numbers and then was able to map them out into a standard map format that we're used to tuning on. 
that being said there is a lot of these and they are broken up in different spark ranges and things like that so whenever we make adjustments on these we generally make kind of fast and loose adjustments down the whole scale of tables uh, and, and hope for the best. Much like timing, you're probably better off having access to a dyno to dial this in, but I can tell you, you do have to do torque tuning on these modern vehicles, specifically these Gen 5 vehicles, if you want to make the most horsepower. And there's a lot of guys out there that have backgrounds in LSs and, and stuff like that that aren't getting into the torque tune stuff and they're not being able to provide the most power. You see it all the times. If you jump over on the forums and stuff, stuff like that, you'll see guys talking about how their cars fall on their face past a certain RPM. Well, it's not past a certain RPM, it's past a certain foot-pounds of torque that the engine's starting to generate. Then we get into how torque management works on top of the torque tuning. And so basically, instead of having those values that directly affect the transmission and stuff like that, now we have factors. And so we can limit things with the factors, but honestly, what a lot of people have found out uh, is that once the torque tune's dialed in, the torque management can basically be left alone. You're still gonna make a lot of power. You're not gonna pick up a lot of time uh, or, or, or speed, as it were, by adjusting those uh, torque management uh, va variations. Now, back in the day, like whenever I was running an 08 Corvette, you know, I shaved almost seven tenths of a second off the quarter mile time just from adjusting torque management. So they were big in making the most power, making the vehicle the most efficient. Now, not so much because it's all wrapped up into this torque model that the whole car operates on. So whenever we get into the tuning section of it, you're gonna see a lot of things. You've got a lot, a lot of PIDs. This video is gonna be a longer one than, than the rest of them because I'm gonna try and walk you through as many different things. And there are some decent references out there, but it gets very dense. You don't necessarily need to know all that information. I'm gonna try and provide you just the information that you need to know whenever we start torque tuning to kind of dial in the different areas. And honestly, it's not that hard. It's kind of counterintuitive in some ways, and there is some limits to how we do things to try and make it efficient and the best tune possible. But, you know, we're basically going to go in there and, and uh, dream big and, and put some, some numbers in there and hope that we're hitting kind of what we're hitting. Ideally, you get this thing dialed in, you take it to a, a dyno, see what your actual torque curve looks like, and then you can adjust the map based on your torque curve, and it should be spot on. And it, and it works a lot like the other kind of uh, tuning does, where once you kind of get in there, you can start to dial it back and then watch things like your throttle body or watch what is in control of the uh, generated torque at that time. And if it's not always like on driver demand or something, we know that we are limiting it by something. So if we start limiting it on one thing or the other, we can then go in and make the adjustments to bump the torque back up. But it is a long learning process. So we're gonna do our best to try and clear the air on torque tuning finally. So I've got some family coming in this week. Uh, I'm gonna try and get that video out before they get there or get here, I should say. So if I don't, it may be a week or two before I get another video out but as always thanks for sticking around guys uh you know hit that like button subscribe if you're not already subscribed honestly that helps out so much and i really appreciate everybody that's already subscribed we broke a thousand recently i want to keep on building up so uh you know the more people that we have watching this content the more content i'm going to put out but as always uh thanks for stopping by the driveway